First thing I want to do is try to trim what's left of this journal here. I, I left this one oversized. We're going to use that CNGP insert. I want to try to true it up without the steady rest being run on there so that we can have a nice true journal with just our center in the end. We've got our center, got it in. So I started taking a 5,000s cut and I didn't see any chatter, so, but it didn't clean it up. So we've gone in a total of 10. Yeah, see, it started chattering right there. That is the problem with uh, a lot of hangout and no support. But I want to try to get this. I wonder if I back it back down to five, if it would finish cleaning it up. Not quite cleaned up. All right, I managed to get a uh, one little narrow spot trimmed over here for the steady rest to uh, to run. So we've got it running true here naturally with our with our live center. We're going to start finishing out this uh, inch and a quarter journal right here. We've got 50 thousandths to come off. And I think I'm going to go ahead and run this CNGP insert and see how it does. We'll, we're going to take some 10 thousandths passes and see if it gives us a good finish there. So we'll just start. We got it zeroed out. Let's just go ahead and take 10. Let's see what kind of finish this is going to give us right here. All right, we got good chip control there. It's not wadding them up and trying to string them everywhere. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna finish this cut out and then I'll mic it and see if we're running nice and straight as well. That finish is actually really, really smooth. It's not going to have that high gloss appearance because such a tight nose radius, but that is nice and smooth right there. It feels good. All right, let's see what kind of taper we're getting in our cut, though. I imagine we're going to get a little bit here that we're going to have to polish out. Actually, it's straight. Let me read the tents there, so. We've got two, so right here we're getting between two and three tenths taper and that's, uh, that's great. We can easily polish that to get it down to size. So this is going to finish at 1.250 inch and a quarter. So I'm just going to keep working on uh, this. We're going to make our 10 thousandths passes to uh, get it down there to size. I'm getting ready to make our final pass on that inch and a quarter journal. We're taking seven thousandths off and I have been opting to use my uh, cutting oil just to add some uh, lubricity to the uh, cut. We're taking such minimal amounts here. We're not really generating very much heat at all. So it's been consistent every cut. So I feel good. Uh, we had eight thousandths to come down. So I'm taking a total of seven. That'll leave me one thousandths that I can take and polish that journal in.
that, Z, that uh, I'm sorry, the CNGP insert is actually doing really well for this. I wasn't sure how the, uh, the chips were going to manage themselves, but they're doing pretty good, curling up and falling down. I like that cutting oil smoke. There's been very little in the shop, so it actually it helps make the shop smell a little bit more like a real machine shop. All right, there we go. Now I have left uh, material in this corner because we're going to use a radius tool to uh, cut a radius in that in that corner right there. Very very little warmth in that shaft to, to even to speak of. So I want to see where I landed on. One, over. One over. Nice and consistent. It's such a pleasure, one over. It's, it's such a pleasure running a lathe that cuts nice and straight right there. You know, and we're running a steady rest there. This can throw it off if you push this thing one way or the other when you're setting those. So that journal's done. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna finish this journal next. This will be our one and 11 sixteenths. Once we finish this, we'll go in here and do our radius and our chamfers. All right, we've got this journal finished, just uh, minus some uh, polish in there. We're going to go ahead and finish this guy out right here. This is going to be a 1 and 11 sixteenths journal, and i got about 45 thousandths to, come to bring this down to size. Got it touched off. I'm going to take a 20 thousandths cut on this. Hoping that the chips maybe don't get into the uh, rollers here, but we'll see. I think I do want to go ahead and try a little bit of uh, flood cooling on this guy here. All right, that tool is doing really good. It's uh, it's leaving a better finish than I thought it was going to, but we are uh, machining this pre-hardened 4140. Take a measurement, make another cut. We just made our finished pass along this journal here. <clears throat> Take a measurement and see where we ended up at. I was shooting for about one thousandth over. So we are at exactly uh, 1.688.
So that gives us a half a thousandth to come down. Let's see if we're straight. Straight as an air, 688. So a half a thousandths that we need to bring this down. That works really good. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier. We left a little here for a larger radius, and I left a little bit in this corner here so that we can go in there with a different insert and uh, have a little radius up in there too. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these radius cut, and then we're going to move on to our, our long journal, which is probably going to be the most temperamental out of all the ones that we've cut on here. All right, we're going to cut in that radius there. I want to point out that I cut this when all I did was I just swapped out the CNMG to a 432 insert, and that puts a nice radius in that corner right there. And that's how it is on the, uh, the shaft there as well. It's got a very, very small. And I'm actually putting a little bit larger radius than what the factory shaft has, but since we got such a smaller shaft meeting up to this journal here, this being the drive-in, I wanted to go with a little bit larger radius. So this is a 1 8 wide radius tool that we're using. And I will go ahead and show this to you because I know i got some folks that's asking. It's the Walter tools. It is the MX22-2. That's the tool. And then that's the inserts there. So we have them in um, threading, grooving, and radius tools. Okay? And they work really good. I really like this. Some new stuff I've been using. Yeah. I'm going to have to kind of uh, work it in here. Just the steady rest. I think it was kind of moved off a little bit. kind of working each side of it to get it really close without the chatter. I'm going to slow it down just to try to help eliminate that. Got the steady rest snug. What I usually try to do is to uh, get one half of it, so get the side where the meets up to the face cut in, and it will come in on the uh, diameter side and try to blend it together. About like that, right there. I'm going to start working on this long section that finishes at two inch. What I had done before I moved the steady rest out of the way, we've got the follow rest up there now, is I had the, the steady rest was running right here. I had a true spot turned on that. That was true with that part of the shaft. So our steady rest was turning true. I went ahead and turned this area right here true. So this first, I don't know, about an inch and three quarter area was true with these, these two journals there. So. I've got the tool bit just ahead of the follow rest, and I want to go ahead and true the rest of this shaft up here so that it is, it's running true. It's got a little bit of run out there. The problem with running the follow rest behind the tool, and people will argue with you and argue with me and say you're doing it wrong, that your follow rest should come in behind the tool because if you're before it, it's going to follow anything out around us. Well, obviously, it will do that. When I was roughing this in, I wasn't concerned about that. We just wanted to get it down close to size. But on a shaft like this, that wants to chatter and vibrate it, the moment the tool starts cutting, you're gonna have chatter. So you can't come in with the tool first and not have something support it because you're gonna have chatter until this comes in there. The other thing is that you come in there and you start adjusting this. If you're not careful with that, you're gonna throw it off. You're gonna be putting uh, pressure on the, on the, uh, the shaft there. So now that we've got a true spot here, we've got, we've got it touched off, we're going to go ahead and try to finish truing the rest of this part of the shaft up so that it's all nice and straight. 
and then I can adjust the tool to where it's just behind those fingers there and those are adjusted to the previous cuts. So let's make a cut across here and see how we do. This was still larger than the rest of that right there, so I need to, let me measure it. I wanna make sure that we don't take it down too small. I left it about 30 over. So yeah, we're still at 33. Do another 10 here and see what happens. Let's see if it tries to chatter on me right off the bat. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. You got to be able to support the shaft. You've got to be able to support it. Vibrating all over the place. It's got to be, these have to be before that. So as long as you have a nice true section, which we do, you can come in with your file arrest before you start making a cut. That way you don't have these problems right here. All right, we're continuing to make our long boring cuts across the long journal here. Continuing to use our follow rest there to support it. And after this cut, that's gonna leave us approximately 10 thousandths to uh, make a finish pass across here. It's being very temperamental. Not the, uh, the machine is doing fine. It's just that long skinny shaft that wants to give you problems there, so. I figured out that if I had to make this shaft again, I would probably just go ahead and order turn ground and polish right off to right out the start there. That way you only have the ends to have to worry about there. I was concerned about what they what the diameter is when it comes in, but I think it's probably gonna be right on size if you was to uh, order turn ground and polished two inch. But we're gonna get her done. And I'm liking having to you know, put a little extra time in here on the lathe so that I can continue to uh, get familiar with the machine and how it, how it reacts to everything that we want to do in it. I'm not really adjusting it, I'm just making sure that there's no slack in the screw there. All right, we're on what I hope to be our our final cut across there. Taking approximately eight thousandths to finish it. And I'm shooting for one thousandths over. We are getting a very small amount of taper in here, but I think it's simply because we're having to um, adjust the steady as it goes across there and it gets a little bit of wear on that bronze. But it's doing pretty good. You can see we're leaving a, we're leaving a nice finish on there. I've got a five thousandths feed rate and we've been running 380 RPM during this op here. Whenever I tried running the uh, 620, which is the low end of the uh, high range, it just seemed that it was giving it more trouble, more chatter than I wanted. So slow it down a little and it seems to be doing good. I'll let you guys know how it comes out. All right, that was our final pass, so let's measure it and see how we turned out here. Like I said, I was shooting for one thousandths over to give myself a little bit of room. We're exactly one thousandths over here, 
Let's just go down the shaft and measure it. One thousandths over. Now that is right on two inches, so that's about a thousandths under right there. I mean, not a thousandths under, but under what I was shooting for. That's exactly two inches right in the center. That's a few tenths over. Half a thousandths. And right at one thousandths there. So looks like from end to end, we've got a fluctuation of about one thousandths. But what, what I like about that is that I didn't go undersized. So we'll have very minimal polishing in the center here and about you know, so we got approximately a half a thousandths on this side. We got a polish and about one thousandths over here. So that puts us well within the target of where we're going to be right there. This is the area that's going to be threaded. I've turned it five thousandths under. We've got our steady rest up here now. And I'm going to uh, machine a thread relief using a one eighth or sorry, sorry, a one inch wide grooving tool here, radius tool. It's not going to like it. So the next stop, I'm going to go ahead and get this, uh, this thread machined on there. You've got one on each side. So once we flip it around and finish this side of the shaft, we'll machine that thread there as well. Some kind of, uh, you know, plates for locking everything together. I've got my uh, thread triangles and a mic. I'll go ahead, I'm gonna, I've got these cleaned off now. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the uh, pitch diameter on uh, what the factory machined the shaft to and just kind of compare it to what the, uh, what the pitch diameter should be. Okay, we've got our thread triangles here. I got my chart giving me the dimensions I'm looking for. So with the thread triangles within a 12 pitch, you take your nominal size and then you add what it says in the chart there for a 12 pitch, you add 0.2737 to whatever diameter it is. And that will land you on your pitch diameter. But let's see, so that would be 2.737. I'm 2.73, yeah. So let's see what they have got. The factory has got this thing machined too. Once you get it squared up, it works pretty good. It can be a little finicky, but man, it's a lot easier using these triangles to me than it, than it is a three wire method. And looks like we've got it uh, just under 272. So they're, they're right on what the, uh, what the nominal thread pitch diameter should be. So we'll be able to use our triangles to, to measure ours as we get them cut and then just make sure that our uh, plate screws on there properly. Got everything ready to go. Let's make a scratch pass and check our pitch. Make sure that we have our machine adjusted properly. All right. Come on, baby. Let me get the half nuts to engage here. So 12 pitch on this machine means we can engage the half nut at any position that we want to. We don't even have to look at the threading dial. Just doing this to verify. All right, and that looks good. We're cutting a 12 pitch there. All right, we'll go ahead and run a little coolant on our tool. We've got the steady rest set. We've got, we've choked up a little bit on the uh, tailstock as well. I'm hoping that we don't get any chatter. Let's go for it and see.
That's what I was afraid of, trying to chatter, even with the steady and the center up close. So I'm going to slow it down one speed just to help, try to help eliminate that a little bit. Got the steady rest a little bit closer, tighten it up some, let's see. That's doing better. That's doing better. I am measuring as we go down. Right now we're measuring uh, 280 on our uh, thread pitch diameter. So we've still got, I don't know, about seven, eight thousandths to come down. It's just really difficult to kind of show you this, get everything in position and, and not be in the way of the camera. But I uh, just want you guys to see that we are measuring our pitch diameter there. So a little bit more to go and we should be there. The rigidity tightened up now. We've got the uh, steady rest a little closer. I had to tighten down more firmly on the top finger there to kind of eliminate that chatter. And like I said, we were choked up there on the tailstock there as well. Just use a mill smooth file to make sure there's no burr sticking up on the top of the thread there, cause any kind of galling as you're test fitting it. That's all we're doing, just trying to remove some of the burrs. get it to start straight all right nope it's a little too tight for that guy right there we're gonna have to bring it down a couple more thousandths because it does not want to start Boy, that guy just does not want to go on there. I hope there's... I hope there's not something wrong with the thread there. I had it screwed on the other shaft, so... It ain't there yet. Okay, after doing some investigation work, I figured out why we can't get our nut to fit the thread. So this was my fault, and I'm glad we discovered it here. So this thread right here is, is machined on your proper two inch diameter minus five thousandths for clearance. This guy right here is actually machined under that, and I never actually measured this thread. I've, I've been measuring this thread think, thinking that both of them you look at that, you got a two inch journal, identical threads, identical nuts, you figure that they're gonna be the same, but this one's actually smaller. And I just lucked out by putting this flange nut on this one it screwed on, and then putting this one on, and it screwed on there there. But th they've got this one smaller. And I believe it was, if you measure it with a two inch mic here, I'm trying to do this one handed, so they've got it 5, 10, 15, 20 thousandths under. So this is a smaller pitch diameter. So I need to, I'm going to have to turn this down. I'm just going to match whatever the diameter of this one is for the, uh, nom, for the OD of the thread. And then we'll have to go back in there and pick up our threads and chase it to get it down to this pitch diameter there, right there. So. I'm just really surprised that that was done this way. I don't know why it would have been done this way because there's really no reason why you would have two different size threads on there. This is just something to capture all of the component parts that go on there. It's possible that whoever made the shaft 
may have made a mistake and they had to turn the threads down a little bit more. I'm not sure. Or they could have their own reason why they made one, you know, 15,000 smaller than the other one. They are labeled as a one and a two, this one being a two. And this one right here has a number one on it somewhere. It was on, there it is. Yeah, so number one and number two. So we're working on number two, which is an oddball size. So we're gonna have to get back in there and modify our thread. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this and having to line the thread up, but I guess I'll show you guys how we can uh, pick up that existing thread there. So we've got it turned down to the proper uh, major OD and I've mic'd the thread pitch and I'll show you, I've got a sticky note written here. This is the pitch diameter uh, minus about a half a thousandth what I measured the original shaft. So I got it up here just so that I can visually see that as we're measuring it. So what we're gonna do to start with, I've got the machine put back in a 12 pitch. We'll turn it on. And what I like to do to verify that we're cutting, that we've got the machine set in the proper setting here is just get it up close. Don't run it all the way up into the thread. We're gonna engage the half nuts and I'm gonna follow that tool and I'm looking at it and it's following the thread, okay? So I know that we're, we're set on the, the right setting on the machine. Now let's uh, go ahead and line that tool up. This is gonna be a little tricky to show you detail, but I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how I like to line the thread up. So the first thing we need to do is engage the half nuts, turn the machine on, and just go ahead and engage them. And I'm gonna stop the machine, just let it coast to a stop there. All right, now, if we run that up, the point of that tool is directly in the middle of that thread. So what we wanna do is adjust our compound. This is why we set our compound on an angle that right there. Or if you guys don't wanna use compound end feed, you can swing this around to zero degrees where it's parallel with the shaft. That way you can move your tool back and forth. But we're gonna use this to line it up. So what I'll do is just go ahead and back it out. And now we're gonna run, run it in there using our cross slide. And what I like to do is touch the right flank of the threading tool. So if I'm looking at it, it's gonna be on my right side. I wanna come into a, to where it just touches it. It can be a little tricky to get the feel, but all right. Without forcing the cross slide, that feels like that's zero right there or lined up on the right flank of the threading tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and set this to zero and I'm gonna reach up here on my digital readout and I'm gonna zero that. Now we need to get to the depth. So now we're lined up with our compound so I can run this compound in very gently without forcing it until it just touches the left flank of the tool right there. So now both sides of our uh, threading tool should be touching that thread. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this guy to zero as well. This has a little set screw you have to loosen to uh, adjust it. I don't know why it doesn't have the friction dial on here, but they got a set screw. All right, so we've got that on zero. So now our thread tool should be perfectly lined up with the existing thread. If we back this out and we come back in till it stops, you can hear the digital readout with the zero approach. It lines right up there on zero. Now we can continue on with our end feed here as we make our uh, passes to cut the thread. Right now I'm just getting a measurement with my uh, triangles to see where our pitch timer is right now. And it looks like it's lining up on 271. All right, and we're, we want it 247. On our first pass, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave everything at zero and see how the tool is uh, cutting. See if it's lined up the way it should be. It's, it's, it's never gonna be absolutely perfect. You're gonna get a little bit of you know, cutting action on one side or the other. There you go. So it's looking pretty good. It's taking a little light cut on there. And I'm gonna get go back in there and relieve that thread relief a little deeper once we're through with the cuts here. All right, go back to our zero. Let's get a little coolant back on our tool. That's it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that because I wanna see how much material we've removed and I'll come back and we'll uh, do another chase if we need to. It 
So I'm showing you this. We have got it to where it's threading on there, right? And I've actually got it machined to the pitch diameter that I measured, but it's still snug. And when you get it all the way up to that, this face here, it starts getting tight. Now I can tell that I could force it on there, but it doesn't need to be that tight. So this is where hand fitting comes in. I'm gonna take another thousandths out of this on the, on the compound end feed. And I think that that hopefully will give it just enough clearance there that this will screw on without being too tight. One thousandths. Try that again. We finally have a touchdown. And you can see it's a very close fit. It's still a machinist fit, even though we've had to go past our pitch diameter just slightly. You can barely feel any movement in that. So this is where it's going to stay right there. I'm just going to do some filing and polishing on the threads to soften them up. And I do want to put the uh, radius tool back in the threading tool here and go in there and clean up this, uh, the undercut there, the thread relief, and just polish those up. But our threads are finally done on this side here. All right, so all of our turning and threading is now complete on this side. The only thing we have left to do is I need to go ahead and get this polished down to our final fit. Remember, we have between a half and one thousandths to polish down on these. So I'm planning on getting some emery cloth. I got a shop roll with a few different grits I'm gonna to use to polish this. So I'm gonna take some of my rags there and uh, lay them across the ways here to kind of catch any grit and just get the polishing on this. I'll give you guys some kind of highlight as we get this done, but I'm planning on uh, turning my music on and just kind of jamming while I get this thing finished out. And I'll bring you guys back once we're ready to uh, flip this around and finish out our opposite side of the shaft there. Less than a half a thousand, it's about four tenths that we need to polish down off that one. Check this and see where we're at here. It's like about two to three tenths. Same. Same there as well. All right, I think we are there where we need to be. I'm gonna do another final measurement right here. Inch and a quarter on zero. It is good. I know you can't see that with the GoPro, but we are on. We're nice and straight and we are lined up perfectly. All right, so here's our one and 11 sixteenths. We want to try to get it 1.6875. All right, 687 and four tenths. 687, four tenths. So we are good to go here. Make sure that last bit, 687 and three tenths right there on that last little bit. Three tenths here, four tenths out there. So we got one tenth difference over that length. But all of our journals are now uh, polished to size and we are completed with this side of the shaft. All right, so I have wiped out the uh, through spindle here with some rags, pushed them through a few times. And I've got it resting on that unfinished shoulder on the very end there. Pick it up on the shaft so it doesn't really drag on the finished journal. I've got my chuck set and I rotate it around, open up two jaws so that it kind of clears the jaws themselves as they come, as this comes through there. But now it's sitting completely flat on that finished journal with a clean board, it shouldn't be scratching it or anything. Yep, we gotta have a little bit more, we've got couple inches here for our threads. So somewhere in this uh, area right there is where we're gonna be 
chucking it up and I'm gonna, we'll have our center supporting it here and then I'm gonna have some soft jaw pads here so it doesn't bite in to that uh, part of the shaft there. Some uh, brass flat bar pads. That should hold it nice and straight there so we can get this indicated and that should allow our center to uh, center up on the end as well. Okay, I'm ready to finish this journal right here. A couple things to note. I went ahead and decided, I just did this off camera, but I went ahead and stretched the shaft back out and chucked up down there right behind the threads on the opposite end and ran this in a steady rest right here on the end and then trued up the center on this end because I could tell that it was running out a few thousandths with this being the rough area right here and all of that being finished. So trued up the center and then we turned the uh, orientation of the uh, brass pads right here, uh, turn it 90 degrees so that we're not uh, trying to, we're not biting down on the full length of the jaw there. It's just this three quarter width that we're uh, touching. So got this trued back up. We've got a good true center and the shaft is running nice and straight from end to end there now. So we'll go ahead. We got about 40 thousandths to move uh, to get this down to size. So we'll get this turned in now. Taking a 20 thousandths pass to get a nice straight cut across there. That'll leave us approximately 20 to come off. So we'll probably finish those in uh, two passes at about 10 thousandths. And I'll slow the feed rate back down to our five for our finish. Uh, so this one is set up at, this is nine thousandths per rev. It's leaving a good finish, but we'll drop it down to our five thousandths for our finish pass. We are down to our final finish pass on this. I've already made a 10 thousandths cut there just to uh, establish what our finish is gonna be. I'm gonna give it a mic here. So 697 and a half, that's exactly 10 thousandths off our uh, finish. 97 and a half. That's at 98. And that's at 98. So somewhere right up in this area, we kind of moved about a half a thou. So we've got about a half a thousandth difference across this 18 and a half inch length there. All right, there we go. This is gonna be our finished cut. All right, let's see where we uh, finished out on our size here. Finish is gonna be 687 and a half. The very end, we're at 688. So half over for finishing, 688. 688. Now we're starting to get a little bigger there. We got a slight amount of taper right in this section right here. Right there at the end, we're uh, 68, 688 and a half. So somewhere right up in this section, it uh, gets about a half a thousandth bigger as we get to our shoulder there, but not bad at all. Uh, hit that with the emery cloth real quick and it's gonna bring it right where it needs to be. So that's looking good. We've got a beautiful finish on it. I'm gonna go ahead and move on and uh, get our threads, get the five thousandths turned there, get our undercut machine for our thread relief. And uh, let's get these threads machined. We're ready to start doing some threading. I've already scratched it and uh, verified our pit, so we are ready to go.
So I had it where I thought it needed to be and I ended up making one more very, very light pass. I dialed in a, a half a thousandths on the compound and made one more pass through here. I want to measure it and see where it ended up at because I was trying the nut and it, it started on there and then it started getting a little snug. So I knew we needed a little bit. Let me see where I ended up on my uh, pitch diameter because when I had measured it, I was a thousandth big and I was hoping maybe that would work, but it did not. Well, now I'm on 273. That's, that's right about our actual uh, pitch diameter that we need to be at according to our chart. I'm gonna put just a drop of lubricant on there. Oh yeah, okay, that's good right there. So we basically took a thousandths. So there's one little, there's a spot right there where it's trying to catch. Look at that, it's going on the rest of the way, all the way to the undercut, the shoulder. I'm gonna leave it right there. That's our nominal uh, pitch diameter. That is good, and you can see we don't have any there's no side to side rock. So we got a good fit on this piece right here. I'm gonna call our threads done minus some filing and some uh, finished polishing on them to soften up the edges there. I think we are about ready to call this done. I'm gonna do a final measurement on it here. So we've been polishing this out. It hadn't taken much using, uh, I think this was 180, 150 and then 320 grit just to kind of give it a final luster there. So 1.6, 87 is kind of what I'm shooting for. 687 and one tenth right there. 687 and one. It's nice and consistent. One tenth. Everything's looking good. two tenths right down here. So we got about one tenth uh, variation across our diameter, but it's nice and straight and it is on size. So that should give them uh, approximately a half a thousandths clearance, whatever's got to go on there. So I mic'd the original shaft and we're, this, the original shaft's got a lot of different war uh, places in it, but on the good spots that you can get a good measurement that you know should be on size is uh, what I'm micing right here. So I'm trying to match the, uh, the diameter with it right there. So th this is pretty much done. I'm gonna hit the threads with a little bit of Scotch-Brite to help soften them up a little bit more. But other than that, our lathe work is finished on the shaft. So our lathe work is complete for the new shaft for Andrew, the 70 ton friction press. So next step is gonna be milling these Woodruff keys. We've got the two larger size Woodruff keys and then we have the two smaller size Woodruff keys. We also have a key down here. Now this guy right here was a little, this was a little confusing because I've never seen a straight key and a Woodruff key made together. And I talked to Andrew about this. He could not find another Woodruff key to go in here. He says that possibly at some point, maybe someone modified this and actually milled a straight key in line with a Woodruff key there, but he's not certain. He just didn't have a key to go in there, but he says, Maybe just go ahead and put it back just like it is. So we're gonna copy this design here and give it back to them just like it is there. So the, uh, the Woodruff key sizes, the small one is gonna be a number 1210 or letter E size. That's this guy right here. Now this was dad's Woodruff cutter. It's the only one I have of this size and it's very dull. So I have ordered a new uh, Woodruff key or Woodruff cutter, I'm sorry, this size right here should be here pretty soon. And then for the larger Woodruff keys, that is a number 1622 or a letter V, two and three quarter diameter, uh, half inch thick. Now I looked through my stash and luckily I actually have the cutter. So this is an arbor type cutter. So you got to have the arbor. So I do not have any of the 40 taper arbor holders for our KVC mill yet. So I went ahead and ordered the proper tool holder uh, to hold this cutter so that we can use it to uh, mill the key there as well. 
And surprisingly enough, I'm, I'm glad that we had this one because uh, this size key cutter, the Woodruff cutter, seems to be hard to find. And uh, Jeff over at IT Supply was helping me source it. And uh, he couldn't find it, but he had the, uh, the holders for it. So we've got a, a holder coming and a new um, Woodruff cutter coming that size there as well. So once we get the cutters and we're all set up, ready to go, we're going to bring you guys back and I'll show you. We'll get these uh, keyways cut in and that'll be the last step of the new shaft. I, I was going to point out, I just got this yesterday. So this is a Woodruff uh, key set that I bought from McMaster Car for the shop here. So it's a good range of sizes and it also has the two Woodruff keys that we need for those guys right there. So Andrew didn't send those. He says he couldn't find them. So I'll just, uh, whenever we finish the shaft, I'll take two of these uh, Woodruff keys here and send those with it. So he'll have them for the, for the new shaft, but a good handy kit to have here for the, uh, for the shop. So hopefully we'll see you guys on the next step where we're gonna be in the milling machine getting these uh, keyways milled out.